So, hello guys, today I want to talk to you about the different deck types into Smite Tactics that you can encounter or that you can build. So, you can mainly go for control decks, you can go for mid-range decks, for aggro decks, or for combo decks, right? So, I'm going to hop in the game and I'll talk with you a little bit on what do you want to do with what kind of decks, and what is the goal of each type of decks and how do you play them and how do you change your play style when when you're trying a new deck style and we're you're gonna know a little bit more on how to build your decks uh, around these different uh, deck types so we're in game now uh, let me just uh, start off with you know the, the most played I think for new players what is the most easy to get your grasp on and play from the start, right? So it's gonna be um, aggro decks, right? So aggro deck, your your goal is pretty straightforward, right? You want to try and and kill your opponent as fast as possible, and you want that usually all your, the cards you put in your aggro deck, you want them to deal damage, right? Deal at least two damage from these cards, right? So you see, usually an aggro deck will run um, curse warriors will run because they can deal two damage even if they kill one of them curse hunters they're gonna run the mayhem to combine with them so this can do uh, like two to three damage they're gonna run the backstabs to have three damage they're gonna run R Valhalla sorcery sometimes to, to get uh, more of the spells like mayhem and backstab to deal more damage they're gonna play Valhalla blessing right then they're also gonna try to play low curve um, Minions, because you want to spam them and kill them really fast, right? You're not going to see an aggro deck with, like, Fenrir's or Ymir, because they're too slow. They're, they're, you're not going to get there. You're not going to have time to, like, if they if it gets where you can play Ymir's and stuff like that, you're often going to be uh, running out of steam, and they're going to start with having much more cards than you, right? So I feel like um, if you want to play aggro, the last... Like the highest mana cost card that you could put will be Loki because he's really good to finishing the burst damage, to finishing that last five health that if they have them right. You're gonna see frenzy to see the big burst. Um, some some decks could could run Tor. Also, obviously Scotty. Um, you know Gunner's Might because you can get the more and more attack and you can get maybe two, three, four damage depending on how much time you attack. Obviously, Fate deals that, that two damage with the leader and another target if there's only two in board. And, you know, it, since they develop so much minions, sometimes either someone is going to play Kors, um, Soul, they're also really big AoE. So that's that's what you want to do as aggro, right? You want to play a lot of little cards to do a lot of damage really fast and end the game, right? So this is a pretty simple deck type. You can play, you know a lot of different cards and you're still gonna be if you have the good core right with the backstabs like th these are pretty in all the aggro decks you have these these 10 cards with double fate these are in all the aggro decks right and they're all common like I mean the base they're all from the base um, they're all from the the, the the base cards that they give you when when you make a new account, right? So you already have half of the the deck like built when you start. And this is why there's a lot of people playing aggro, right? The other deck type that you'll see a lot will be mid range, right? So let's see if we delete this one, and now we're gonna go in mid range. So what is the goal of a mid range, right? Let's let's pick up Zeus for example. Mid range, what you want to do is each turn you want to put a threat on the board that is um, always better than your opponent. Like that's what what's your goal, right? So first, the turn turn two, your ideal play is marksman, right? Then turn three, you want to develop something really strong like Brontus. Okay, let's see, let's go like that. Then on turn four, you also want to to play something really good to, that has more value than anything else that your opponent's gonna play. That will be Scylla or Medusa, usually. Um, then on turn 5, you wouldn't want Enyo, or like uh, Rachne or Hades. On turn 6, you want Athena. And then on turn 7, Reese is a little weak, doesn't have that much value, you would have Fire Giant. Right? And then you will finish with some... 
you know, some fillers like uh, bar rims to deal damage. You can use a blink to move around your your Tinas and your other stuff. You could play some, uh, let's see real fast, some dead ringers to have more value. Um, and then you look at your curve. You have two, two drops, two, two, three drops. You have three, four drops, three, five drops, and two, six drops, right? So maybe you want to put more four drops because... Uh, you know, at 8 mana after Fire Giant, you could play 2 4 drops. So we could play like a Nafro and then a Tanatos if we want, right? Or 2 Afro or 2 Tanatos, depending on your playstyle, right? So I did a really good, like, um, mid range deck real fast, right? So your optimal plays will be turn 2 Marksman into Brontus into one of your 4 drops, into one of your 5 drops, into a Tina, Fire Giant, and then turn 8, you could play 2 4 drops or, you know, combine with that. And there you go. Like each card that you put, it's oh, it always consumes the whole mana. It you're always mana efficient, and you uh, you want to have more value than your opponent. And this is how you're gonna the, win the game, right? You have some utility cards like Blink and Dead Bringer that you know if, if you have I don't know um, a Brontus, you Dead Bringer, you can kill like maybe an, an Emir that has six L that is a five drop of an enemy mid range um, Norse deck. Alright, so it's, this is like, you know, what you want to try and do with the mid range decks. Uh, I did the Zeus one. Let's see real quick if we can make, um, just so you have another example. Uh, let's try and make, um, let, let's try and make real quick one of each, uh, one of each Pantheons. Uh, if you want to, like, a mid range draw, with, uh, use Magma Slam as removal. Um, you will see Solbex for the turn 2, you see Bastets, you will see Anher for the turn 4, Needs for the turn 5, maybe one Geb also, you'll see Anubix on turn 6, uh, maybe Osiris on turn 6, then um, Annihilation on turn 7, Phantom's Grasp, um, maybe Book of the Dead, if, like, these are really late game though, so this, this main range is all a little bit more late game. And then you'll see, like, obviously double execute since they're really great. And then you're left with two cards that you can probably put whatever you want. Uh, maybe, you know, you don't have that much uh, early game. Maybe, like, two stair ropes since they're really good stats for three drop. Elder RP only has two health. It's not really good. If you don't want to put two stair ropes, you can also go with more removal if you want. Playing double fire and for double sunder. You know, well, maybe one blink also out there, right? You get the point, right? You want to, like, have a really good curve. Each turn you want to put some big threats. Um, let's see, if, if you want to do it with a Norse, I suggest you Freya, because her ability is, is a little bit better in order to control the board, because, you know, mid-range is all about the board. You need the board to, to deal damage and to win the game, right? You would go maybe with the, um, let's see, uh, the Hunters and at the start of the game into Fate. This is some good removal. You could go turn three with Scotties, maybe a Soul or two. Um, then you go with Tors, with Loki, Emirs, uh, Fenrir, Fenrir, you could play one Fenrir, let's play two, yeah, three draw, five drops, there you go. Um, then you don't have really much four drops, so maybe you could put some, uh, Chao Fangs, also Taunt is really good. And the five drops are pretty good also, six drop, you have a Fenrir, maybe you're having a Fury, and if whenever, usually you put a Fury, you want some charge, charge is also good with low key tours, um, you know, it can unhinder yourself, so, and then you're, maybe you want to Fire Giant, and you're maybe missing some, uh, you know, maybe you don't want Fire Giant or the Fury, and you could put like two Sunders or two Fire Rims, you know, you can play around that, but, you know the, the the core is the same, right? And it, and and if you want to do this with the new Chinese Pentian Chinese, uh, it's a little bit harder since now you just can't. You don't have the Al Kuang. So let's see if we can put like build a really fast mid range. Uh, if you want, let's see, uh, Imperial Soldier uh, for two mana. Turn three, you want maybe Changa. You want some maybe Archers also because they're really good. Then. Rising, rushing Thunder, so it goes after some removal, maybe one, double UE to have the turn four, the Wilson Guardians for more turn fours, double, um, uh, double Al for turn five, some Kongs on six, and then you go maybe with, uh, some removal, Fire Imps, and, uh, 
Maybe you could put also... Is charge good? Uh, it's kind of decent. You can put one combo with a chunk guard or hoogie. Maybe the Sun Kong also. Um, you could put like Stern 7, Fire Giant. Uh, you know, you, you want to build up some really cool stuff that you can put. And you always want to add some removals also because, you know, sometimes you're not going to be able to put as much value as the enemy put. So using some removal, you, you, maybe you can get there. And some utility cards like charge, right? Um, so that's for mid range. Uh, now let's now let's go for control, right? Uh, right now, all the main uh, three, like the first three Pantheon, you could play control with them. Nua right now doesn't have enough cards slash good removals or board control to be able to um, do a control deck. So you know the most effective uh, deck that everybody knows is control is raw, right? Control has usually two win conditions. You either run your opponents out of threat and they're gonna die themselves by not having any more cards and starting to take damage for drawing no cards, or you wanna play like um, kill everything that they play and when you like they don't have a strong turn, you can have yourself some really big threats on board and they're not gonna able to do uh, deal with it. Right, so the or the start of the game is you just control everything that they play on board, and through the late game you play your big bombs and you try to kill them with these big value cards like Book of the Dead, for example. Right, so you start with removal early, like Magma Slams. Let's go and get also maybe some other removal like um, uh, Fire, uh, Fire Emblem or Sonder. You know, it's really whatever you prefer. Um, then you go with Sentry Wards, because this is actually removing a card from their deck, so you can potentially remove a threat from the, from their deck, and you can have it for yourself to, you know, contest the board or something. So, Sentry Ward is really good. You want to play one Pardon, because you don't want to take return damage when you're trying to trade with the range units, like, let's see if they have a, a Medusa, and you want to trade it with one of basic attack of a raw and two Fire Imps, or, or, you know, you want to attack it, and next turn you want to attack it with a Magma Slam to deal 5 damage, well, Pardon is going to save you 6 health there, right? And you're going for the long game, so you want your health. Um, so you want, obviously, one Pardon. Um, then you could go with, uh, let's see, uh, where are the control cards? We're all here. You could play with some um, Solbeck to contest the early game. Uh, you could play Bastet if you play it on the back, and you can use the, the, the cats deployed. Um, you know, also having a soul back early game is good against Arrow because they need to deal with him. But if they have a fate, right, they still like free fate soul back. So I don't know. Some people like it, some people don't. Uh, I personally like it because you can. It's like you play soul back and next turn he can deal two damage with his ability. So it's basically paying a removal ahead for two mana if they don't remove it. And it gives you three health. So it's kind of like an Emperor's Health and a Sonder in one card if you want to compare it like that. And then, you know, double execute, of course, maybe one or two last breath, depending if you can put uh, other cards in there. Uh, you want Gab to body block and give you health with his ability. Also, this is really good, you know, and then you go with your big stuff, right? Let's put the two here, like, so we're gonna have five really powerful cards, like Anubis, and then for Annihilation to Board Wipe, you want Book of the Dead to Revive, and then you want Phantom's Grass to, um, take, it's like basically a better execution, because you take one of their threats and you use it against them, so if they don't remove it, then you can kill another one of their threats, and then you can go with, like, um, a Book of Thought, so... Uh, you, you know, you can discover more cards and have more value in your hand, more removals and anything. If you don't like Book of Thought, you can play, uh, let's see, you can play, you know, pretty much um, everything that gives you value. Emperor's Health is kind of okay, because if you start with that, it doesn't really do anything. It's good against aggro, but against mid-range and combo, they're probably going to still kill you. Maybe you're, you're going to be able to stabilize against a combo. But, you know, you, you get the point, right? You want as much removal as you can. Like, here, I don't even have Saunders, so I could put more Saunders. As many removal as you can to the early game. Maybe remove a Saunders for Saunders. You know, whatever you like, you prefer. Uh, or maybe let, remove one of the last breath since, you know, you have a bunch of good removals. So, removals, and then you go into your bombs. and Or get to, you know, block for yourself and win some time. So they don't have to burst you, they have to deal with 7 health on board. 
and stuff like that. So this is what you want to do with control. Um, so this is like a control raw deck. Let's see, you know, um, Norse control plays a little differently. You want to play with Freya and use her ability to always remove one target from the board. Um, let's see, uh, you obviously want to not use Valhal Blessing because you, you want them to run out of cards, not you. So you play like Fates, you can play uh, Souls, you can play some um, Loki, you can play, uh, you can play, let's see, let's see, let's see, um, you can play some Charge, obviously you want Pardon, you want Double Sentry, just trying to think from a control kind of view. Oh yeah, you want two double child fangs, of course. You can have a bull demon king with charge, because this this can really clear out the board really nicely. You also uh, you should run two charge. I'll already have two charges. Deck limit. Yeah, I already have two charges. Good, because you want a gold furry, because gold furry with charge can kill uh, the Greek Athena and a basic attack from your Freyas. Um. Let's see what else you want. You want value out of your, your thing, so... Um, you could play uh, Scott, uh, Scotty also, because they have to remove that, or you can use it as, you know, dealing two damage every turn if she's playing in a safe spot. And... You're missing four cards. Oh, we're missing uh, the removal. Of course, the Fire Ems and the Sunder. There you go. These are... Here's your control, right? And, and you have your big threats, and... and after like Loki, Boldem, and King Furies, like these are your really big cards. Uh, you could potentially change maybe uh, one card. Let's say if you don't like Fury, you could change Fury and for a Fenrir. But you know you're gonna be weak to Athena's. You could play a change of a charge if you really want to keep it for the Fury. There you go. You can also have this because this is really big threat late game if they don't deal with that. It's really good to have one in your deck. Um, uh, you can always remove maybe one soul if you want to really keep the double charges. But you can play around that, but you get the point. And then you go for, um, you know, some control. If you go with some control uh, um, Greek, you, you want to use Poseidon with his ability to deal do damage anywhere on the map. And then, again, you want to you wanna try to use as many defenses but option like Brute. Um, some people will run eventually agility to run away from the rangers and stuff like that, maybe, or teleports. I prefer to run one half, te one teleport. Um, and then you play, um, where, like, Medusa is really good, uh, because her ability is able to insta-kill. You can play some Aphrodites to boost your taunters so they have to pass through it. You can definitely play Tantos, that is, you know, basically more Sunders than Fire Imp. Um, you're going to play Anyo because this is pretty much uh, one of your stronger cards to kill them. Athena, with the Anyo, you want to have the Dead Brainer so you, she can deal a tremendous amount of damage. Um, and then you're going to have, uh, let's see, you can play one Blink to be able to move your taunts around. You're going to play all the removal, Fire Amp, Sunders, and you're going to play the other Chao Fangs here, that's about it. Uh, you can change some cards, maybe cutting an Afro and a Teleport, adding some Kangs or Furies with Charge or some Bull Demon Kim, they're always good to be honest. Uh, but you know, you can play around, you get the base that you want to remove and then you want your big threats. Like you could cut one Deadbringer and maybe play like a Kang or a Bull Demon King. You know, you, you can play around that, removing a thing for a Charge instead. But the point is the same, right? You want to control the board, kill everything they play, and then kill them with the big cards at the end, or run them down the cards. Oh, I'm basically missing the most important card from all, you know, it's Sentry Ward. You need these two Sentry Wards to be able to run them out of cards. And, yeah, now that I'm thinking that the Rock Control, like, like I'm just going to shoot my Rock Control. You want the double minion recruiter. Fully forgot. This this is gonna help you also, and this is why Rise mostly played in control because you have the many recruiters that the other Pantheon doesn't have to remove their cards from the deck. All right. Uh, so this is for control uh, decks, and we did mid range, we did control, we did aggro real quick. Um, you know, I don't I with the like, low cost cards of Norse. I think Norse is the 
like the master of aggro. The other ones don't really come close to it. Nua, she's kind of okay, but not still so much aggro, depending sometimes on when they what your hand is, because they're not have that much. They have a lot of low cost spells, but minions not that much. So now we're finishing with uh, combo decks, right? Combo decks uh, usually they want to just try to have their combo piece and one shot the opponent or two sh and two turns kill the opponent, right? So I'm gonna give you some examples. Uh, the like one I like the most is the one turn kill with Anubis, right? So basically what you want to do is you want to get all the cards in your hand and then do the combo. So you want the Anubis. You want a uh, double Rod of Theudi to boost his ability, right? And you want two uh, two blinks and one charge. So here's your combo, right? This is the combo for the, the combo decks um, of uh, that runs Anubis. You play Anubis, you give him charge, you give him two Rod of Theudis, so he's going to have... Uh, his ability is going to hit for 7, and then you blink the enemy target into his ability, so he takes 7 each time because he moves on the ability, so the game thinks he's, like, taking 7 damage. This deal 21 damage, right? So this is the combo, but now you're going to say, hey, but if you play Anubis and you play 2 Road of Thuti and Charge, that's 12 mana, you can't do that. This is why you're going to play, usually, um, on Appeasement to reduce all the cards in your hand by 2, so you're going to be able to do the combo, right? So with Appeasement, you can play some Bastet Cats to combo with that. Um, I like to run a Fire Imp to combo with Appeasement because it's really cheap for mana. And then you want to, like, literally, you want to survive until you get your combo, right? But what I like to do is basically playing, always think the draw cards. So you're going to draw your deck super fast and then you're going to be able to combo before they kill you, right? This is really weak against aggro because you're just trying to draw, draw cards instead of fighting for the board. So, but they're really good against control because control are trying to kill everything that you play, but you're literally playing nothing. So they're just waiting on you and, and you can assemble your pieces really easily and burst them and kill them. So I also like to play uh, Double Star Cats because they have three attack to combining with Dying Wish to draw more cards. And then I run usually Magma Slums and um, Executes. To basically kill whatever big targets they have if I'm not ready to combo. And let me see. I'm missing two cards. What was the two other cards for the combo deck? I mean, you can play anything that makes gonna make you survive, but um what else was I playing? Uh maybe double sunder. I think it's double sunder to have some more removals, but I'm not really sure about how what was the Mm, nah, but you, you get the point. You want the combo. You want to be able to achieve the combo. So this is the the one turn kill with Anubis that you can play, and then you have the other combo decks. That's gonna be example, uh, Freya with the Loki uh, combo. So basically, what you want to do is you want to play Loki. On uh, next turn, you want to play um, Hasten Fatalis. And or Frenzy and the Beads, right? Let me just get a second Frenzy. There you go. And a second uh, Aston Fatalis, right? So you play Loki, then you boost him, so he deals 7, and then you Hasten Fatalis for another 7, and next turn. Uh, it, it's either these two or these two, so here, for that, you, you deal literally 14 burst damage, so you need to deal a little bit of damage before. If you go with Temporal Beads, it's you attack, then you, um, uh, you use his ability, sorry, you Temporal Beads, you use his ability again, and then you Hasten Fatalities for 5, so this is 15 damage if you use these two. Usually you want to run also Backstabs to get the last 3 or 4 damage in their face. And uh, then you play, obviously, Valhalla Blessing to be able to draw more of your combo pieces. You play Valhalla Sorcery to have the, um, the Frenzy or the Fatalis that if you don't draw them, then keep in mind that early you just want to use Freya's ability to remove the most um, threats that they have on board. You can also um, play some Banish if they have big threats to win you a turn. 
Uh, you can play some... Oh, you need to play some Web of Weird. Because if you get plus two attack on a Loki that you discover, well, the, the, the combo does a lot more damage, right? It does like uh, four or more with, with the Jason Fatalis. Uh, so instead of doing like 15 or 14 or doing like 18 or 19, and then you're uh, gonna be able to go. You're missing some cards, so uh, you double. Uh, definitely one double blink to blink out the taunters or blink uh, the enemy in range of you or stuff like that. And then you can play like uh, basic removal, like far ends, fist of the gods to win turn in time, uh, Saunders, you know, or you can also play fates that. that Probably it's better because you know they're gonna take damage from the fate. Also, also it's gonna combo if you don't. So this is basically the combo that you're looking for. And then you have um, the Greek combo. The Greek combo is though because there's so much aggro. Also, you know it's not really played. But basically, what you want to try to do is you if you want to play it super super safe, you want one sanctuary and you want um, a fury, right? So on turn ten, you play fury sanctuary. Uh, keep in mind that you could put the Fury on turn 6, but if she survived, you have the combo. If not, she's going to die. But Sanctuary makes it, she's not going to uh, get killed. And once you do that, the next turn, you just play... Um, where is it? Double Dead Brainer. And you play a Teleport to go to uh, around the enemy and basically just uh, one-shot them with 18 damage of the Fury. So, and then you just build for drawing cards and surviving. So you want Argus to be able to draw cards with his divinity. And you want definitely uh, all the four gods, gods that you can, that is going to help you survive. Uh, Medusa, Thanatos, Aphrodite um, to play after your Argus. Uh, you want to play uh, Diving Intervention to pl uh, draw more cards to get your combo pieces faster. And then after that, you can play some removal like Four Amps and Sunders. Um, and maybe some blinks also to remove the taunters and stuff like that. But, you know, you get the combo and the rest is just fillers. Um, uh, you get a little bit of the idea of what you want to try to do. So, this is the, the combo uh, Zeus deck, right? Uh, there's also one with um, a really easy one with Chinese right now, right? It, it, you only need two cards in order to combo. And, and you basically need temporal beads. And you need uh, Sun Wukong, right? So you play Sun Wukong uh, on turn six. They're not going to remove or uh, remove it or anything. He needs to stick on the board, so be safe to playing it somewhere. It's not going to die, right? Be careful of raw executes. Uh, b try to bait them before on other targets than Sun Wukong. And then you play Sun Wukong. The next turn, you use his ability. You go in tiger form, and you can attack immediately for eight. Then you smash him for eight. You temporal beads. His ability is going to reset, you're going to use his ability again, and go again with Tiger, he's going to gain plus 2 attack, and he's going to hit for 10, so this is going to be 18 damage with these two cards. And you're going to be able to, um, you're going to be able to uh, fill the rest of your deck, so whatever you want to survive until then, so Saunders, Blink to get away from the Taunters, Fire Amps, uh, you can also run Fist if, if we don't have... Uh, now, of course, you can do Rushing Thunders, you can play um, Crescent Blades, Manifold Blades. Uh, well, Manifold Blades, not really, because we're not going to have Colossal Units. But you want to play some, maybe, uh, Imperial Guards, Imperial Archers. Uh, uh, definitely, you want to play Imperial Prize to draw more cards. And then, maybe, like, Stone Guardians to have some control from range. Or, you know, you get the point. Um, so this is like the combo decks and this this could be like literally a mid-range deck But you change one card for temporal beads and then you have mid-range combo deck ish and like this is also why I think uh, aggro right now aggro norses are um, Aggro norses are a little bit also combo because you know you play so much stuff and then you mayhem and next turn you frenzy and they're dead like if they didn't remove all your board or if you have a decent board so uh, aggro is also kind of combo right now so basically, these are all the deck type that you can see um, with all the, the Pantheons right now. And I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a lot. Feel free to leave a comment below. But let me know what you think. Uh, leave a like in the video if, if uh, you learned something. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you, guys.